tons and tons of clothing were donated. Uh, millions of dollars went uh, from here to, the, uh, to Europe to, and to various camps. And uh, the various agencies, uh, companies, uh, firms uh, provided uh, uh, executive help uh, to try to place the Hungarian refugee in some uh, part of the United States where he would be able to continue his life. Can you explain why the American reaction was, was so emotional? Emotional uh, because uh, uh, the American uh, was frustrated, uh, or the United States uh, as such was frustrated in its attempt to help directly. The Hungarian on October 23rd uh, stood up in the course of history for certain principles that the United States has stood for uh, since its very founding. The American identified almost uh, completely and to a man uh, with uh, what was going on in Hungary. The uh, American government uh, had spoken out uh, rather openly and uh, it said that uh, if they would uh, rise up uh, and uh, demand their freedom, uh, help would be coming. The American felt uh, frustrated. Uh, he felt that uh, uh, he was not able to do that which uh, should have been done uh, in those days of October and November. The uh, Hungarian, uh, on, Hungarians on the streets were giving their lives and crying out uh, that uh, they wanted a, a free country, and this they were not allowed to have. When uh, the Russians re-entered Budapest on November the 4th, uh, this represented, uh, in the minds of most people, the death knell of everything that they hoped for, a new start uh, for uh, a Hungarian democratic life. And uh, it was at that time that uh, many uh, said, now we must leave. And uh, they kept coming across the borders even after uh, uh, late November and early December. Uh, the Hungarian refugee uh, came with an ideal, uh, some of them with the hope that they would be able to return. Uh, I recall the, the uh, first and second years when the Hungarian Student uh, Association had its uh, uh, annual congresses. They were speaking of returning to Hungary perhaps in a year or two, and things would change. There was a great deal of hope. Now, this... Uh, um, oasis, uh, this kind of a hope, too, has uh, disappeared. Uh, it, it glimmered and uh, it has faded from the, from the horizon in the lives of most of the Hungarian refugees. I decided I will go because there was a kind of, uh, uh, I would say, Kafkaesque uh, feeling in the life. You, 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 didn't, you didn't know where you stand. You didn't know what measures to measure against. Uh, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't uh, feel out whether you are uh, worth anything yourself or just the circumstances uh, throw you around. And, uh, well, to be short, I wanted to swim in free waters. Were most of the refugees surprised at what they found here? We expected that this is a free land, not just politically. It's a, it's a free to give you opportunities. And uh, like the Americans have an American dream, there is also a dream of America in Europe, especially in Eastern Europe. So people felt this is a land where they go, they roll up the sleeves, get down to work, and they will be rewarded. 
And I think in this respect, there was no surprise. They, they found what they were looking for. Most of them did. I, I look around and, and see friends and, and uh, I see acquaintances. I see people in the working uh, factories or, or professionals. I see them uh, fairly prosperous. And uh, I would say most of them are happy. I think the, uh, of course, there is an emotional problem to, to overcome. They have to identify themselves, what they are, what they, what they want. Are they Hungarians living in America, or are they Americans who came from Hungary, or uh, American Hungarians, or Hungarian Americans, whatever somebody would uh, uh, choose to say. Most of them took the citizenship, which uh, as an, as, it's an honest obligation to take the oath and declare themselves loyal. But of course, that couldn't wash out all the uh, ties to the old country. I would phrase that you, uh, you have to establish a double loyalty. This, this problem of finding identity must have been very serious for most of the refugees, isn't that true? Well, uh, that's right. Uh, you, you're, you're absolutely right to reach beyond the point because there was a uh, search for identity in the sense of, of the individual within the circumstances of a controlled state where uh, you live in a community, you are part, you know, whether you are appreciated part or a uh, uh, rejected part of this community, but you are part of the life. Uh, but what you, you couldn't really find in this circumstance is yourself as an individual, your limits, your rights, your uh, 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 possibilities. So people were searching, actually, uh, I might even uh, say that this was the revolution itself, searching for this kind of identity, uh, uh, personal and national. Do you consider yourself an exile now, or have you made an American commitment? I consider myself a, uh, an American who was born in Hungary and uh, values his background and uh, his past, but uh, looks for a future here. Mr. Liptock, now that you've been here for 10 years or so, would, would you consider going back to Hungary? Not under the present conditions, no. I would if conditions changed. I came out involuntarily for medicine and I could never return, so there was no decision involved in my leaving. For myself, I was not planning to leave my country. Uh, the thought never occurred to me to do so, and the reasons outside of my own uh, area of control caused me to leave it. So, in that respect, uh, I am not a typical emigrant. I don't think that any particular person can change countries readily if somebody being born as a Hungarian will always remain Hungarian. It's a tie that cannot be broken completely. It's uh, a subjective feeling. And even if you deplore some of the things that are going on in that particular country, it's still your own home. At the time Columbus discovered America, the Hungarian constitution been 300 years old. There is a lot of tradition, culture, of historical ties, which are very hard to break. Not that I particularly want to. To me, it's something valuable. But uh, even if you wanted to, it would be very hard. And on the other hand, if after a very long time you decide to go back to Hungary, you haven't kept up with times. Uh, you will find that 
uh, Hungary changed in the last 10 or 20 years, and you will never find whatever you left and whatever you thought was Hungary or Hungary meant for you. Therefore, anyone who leaves the country, his or her country for a long period of time, in a sense, becomes homeless. In one respect, the life of an exile is difficult because he does have this dream of uh, eventually going back to his homeland and uh, therefore it's harder to uh, take roots in the new environment. So in this, this respect it's probably different. A, uh, children of a family from Cleveland moving to the west coast would not really hesitate to to plan for the next 25 years. For me, it's almost, well, it's very difficult to do so because my personal future depends on the overall world situation. So it's not luck of gratefulness or loyalty. It's just the sheer fact that uh, I happen to be Hungarian. to uh, say something else about this problem of identity. There is a problem on the receiving end. It's uh, uh, the traditional immigrant problem of getting into this so-called melting pot and then uh, lose in, uh, losing your identity. And uh, I think we, we were uh, misled by the uh, information we, we, we had about this. Thing. I don't think it's a melting pot as such. I think it's uh, more a, a, a pressure cooker. You, <laughs> it brings out the best of you because you have against the competition. And uh, you don't have to lose your old colors. People will accept. Uh, you, will, you, you, will, you, of course, will not be able to loo lose your accent, so they will recognize you. They say, hey, buddy, where are you from? And, uh, and then this is the only country in the world when you can say, I'm from here and how about you? And this makes you feel better. I, uh, I just can't see myself uh, turning coats and, uh, and become a Frenchman or, or, or become a, a, a German. But I can very well see myself to become an American and still be honest and, and loyal to my uh, past uh, country and uh, past life. And uh, this, I think, uh, answers the question of, uh, of searching for an identity because uh, it's, it's the easier if you don't have to give up everything you had before. Oh, there's absolutely no question about that. But it is because to become an American demands much less from you. Uh, to become a Frenchman, it's impossible. It's, it's humanly impossible. They expect you to be involved, and that is emotionally and intellectually, in the whole experience of that thousand-year-old nation with their culture, with their struggles, with their history. And uh, that, of course, no human being can do in a lifetime, even if he was willing to. Uh, in America, there's practically no pressure on you. I never felt at all that I was put at any disadvantage because I didn't speak the language fluently or because my name is different or because my habits are different. Uh, if anything, I found just the opposite. I, I found that uh, people were possibly friendlier to you I can probably explain it psychologically why uh, they will most likely be thinking of their own parents, grandparents, and their problems, and were kind of trying to give back the help which 
they were offered uh, a decade or a century ago.